Welcome everybody, I'm Laura Shu. As you most likely know, Adobe released Lightroom 5.0 just a couple months ago. They've now skipped 5.1 in their numbering and have moved on to 5.2. As with any free update, there are bug fixes, new camera support, and new lens profiles. But as Adobe often does in its first dot release, they've also thrown in a few new features. I'm going to cover these new features in this video. I'm going to start out in the spot removal tool. We now have in 5.2 a feather slider. This is a small change, but to me it's a really important one. It allows us to adjust the harshness of the edges of our fixes in both heal and clone mode. Now as I've covered in previous videos on the spot removal tool, I usually work in heal mode. Let's say I want to remove this portion of the telephone pole. If I click on it and I take the source from Clean Sky, you can see that I have this bleeding issue along the edge here. So Heal blends in the fix with the surrounding area. Occasionally, I have this problem. In this case, I switch to Clone mode, but often Clone gives too harsh of an edge to the fix. So now with this feather slider, I can adjust the harshness of that edge and make it blend in really well. So I'm really happy about this addition. Notice also that in the official release of 5.2, we now have a cursor preview of how much feathering we have. So we have an inner circle and an outer circle, and the distance between the two is the amount of feathering. If I go ahead and increase feathering to 100, you can see the difference in my cursor. Now we can use shift left bracket to decrease the amount of feathering and shift right bracket to increase it. Now there have been a couple other improvements here in the spot removal tool as well. When you do a new fix, I'm going to go ahead and click here and let go, you know that Lightroom automatically finds an area that it considers to be a good source to fix this area with. There have been some improvements to the algorithm for this. It should do a better job now at finding a good source when you're working with a textured area like bark or rocks or foliage. In addition, in Lightroom 5.0, occasionally, as I was fixing an edge in a photo that had been cropped, it would choose the source from outside of the crop. That made it very confusing. It made it very difficult to figure out where that source was coming from. Now, the spot removal tool in 5.2 will prefer areas inside of the crop. If it can't find a good one inside of the crop, it will still look outside of the crop, which I think it should do but it'll do that less often. Another change relates to the noise reduction section. I'm going to go to this photo here and I'm going to zoom out on it so you can see the full photo. This is a photo by Eric Chan of Adobe that I'm using as an example here. If I hit the backslash key, you can see that this is very much underexposed. That was necessary to get detail up in the sky. Now brightening a photo that's underexposed this much is going to reveal a lot of noise in the shadows. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to open up the detail panel to show you that down here in the noise reduction section, by default on raw files, we have 25 of color noise reduction. That's not new in Lightroom 5.2. Let me go ahead and zoom in even a bit more on this. And if I take color noise to zero, you can see just how much color noise there is. Now the color noise slider works on individual pixels of color noise. But even if I take this all the way to the 100, you can hopefully see some magenta banding or modeling in here. The smoothness slider, which is new in Lightroom 5.2, allows us to get rid of these larger areas of color modeling that the color slider doesn't take care of. So if I take smoothness to 100 now, you can see hopefully that that magenta banding or modeling is gone. So another small change that really helps us to get the most out of our underexposed photos. Note that a smoothness setting of 50 is the default and would give you the same results as you'd gotten in Lightroom 5.0 without the smoothness slider. So amounts greater than 50 will give you additional benefit. Finally, the last change I want to show you is in the adjustment brush, radial filter, and graduated filter. So our local adjustment tools. I'm going to click on the adjustment brush and let's say for the sake of example that I wanted to darken an area. We now have the ability to right click 
on our pin or control click on a one button mouse and choose duplicate to duplicate our adjustment as well as delete our adjustment and then reset it which really means delete all of the adjustments we've done with this tool. So that right click functionality is what's new in Lightroom 5.2. Two other changes that I'll mention briefly. In the basic panel, if you use auto tone, you should see more consistency between images and between different sizes of the same image. Finally, if you build smart previews for your photos, the maximum size is now 2,560 pixels rather than 2,540. In addition to new features, we have support for new cameras, new lens profiles, and support for tethering for a few additional cameras. There are also several really important bug fixes. So I definitely would recommend that everyone update to Lightroom 5.2. Here in Lightroom, if it hasn't prompted you already to update, you can go out to Help, Check for Updates, you'll download the file, and then double click on the file to run the installation wizard. If you're wondering whether you've installed it successfully, you can come back to Help, and then at the bottom here, it should say Lightroom 5.2. I'm Laura Shu. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're watching it from YouTube, subscribe to my channel to hear about new videos. And if you're watching this from my website, sign up in the sidebar for email newsletter updates, and you'll be the first to hear about new Lightroom tutorials and tips.